Good afternoon. I'm Al Cresta, and there's coming into Detroit, into the city of Detroit, Michigan, southeast Michigan here. We've got a Detroit Women's Convention coming up October 27th through 29th. Now, this has gained a good deal of attention locally, but it's actually a national uh, project. Uh, the women who were organizing the January conference in uh, March, in conference in uh, Washington, D.C., the so-called Women's Inaugural March, in reaction to President Trump's election, the women organizing that have organized the Detroit Women's uh, Convention. And we've decided, since this is actually in our own backyard, we broadcast from Southeast Michigan, we decided to spend a little time uh, looking at it. This is why. This, this whole question of uh, what it means to be a woman uh, is an important question. Uh, women are central to the Christian faith. Uh, in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son, born of a woman. Uh, Mary was the woman who gave her body substance to Jesus. His body is derived from, from Mary. Uh, Mary is the ideal disciple in the Gospel of Luke, who hears the word of God and keeps it in her heart. Uh, she's the first human being to receive a glorified body. Women are the first witnesses of the resurrection. Catholic history would be impoverished but for the role of women in starting religious orders and executive, having executive roles in hospitals and colleges, universities, uh, social service agencies. So when a cluster of American women's groups gather and pose, and pose as the voice of womanhood, when they claim to speak for all women, we want to know if they've considered the experience and the contributions of Catholic women. And the Detroit Women's Convention, it's obvious from studying their literature and their speakers list, they're clueless about the real-life experience of any woman with whom they disagree on a variety of issues. In fact, if you take a look at some of the pictures from the Women's March in January, uh, you can see that this is... This is, was an attempt to divide American women along racial lines as well as political lines. So, for instance, one sign there was, don't forget, white women voted for Trump. Now, from a Catholic point of view, womanhood transcends political division. It, it transcends identity politics. Uh, but the Detroit Women's Convention here... Uh, is all about radical left-wing identity politics. In fact, women formed by the teachings of the Catholic faith are not welcome. And on the other hand, quote, lesbian women of color who seek transsexual surgery, end quote, they're going to receive a workshop. I mean, it gives you some idea of the skewed perspective. And when you use people, especially people suffering from right now, the big, the big thing is gender dysphoria, uh, and, and again, let me stress, we don't know all that's involved with gender dysphoria, okay? We know that there are psychological components to it. There's a lot of research still being done. Unfortunately, it's become trendy. So I recently heard of a, an acquaintance of mine who now claims to be a lesbian uh, in a man's body. Uh, he is you know, you have to say, well, what's going wrong there? Uh, but using people who have confused ideas of gender, to use them politically is uh, manipulative. But these are org the organizers of this group, the Detroit Women's Convention, are far left in American politics. Uh, they're largely Bernie Sanders supporters, and they believe that uh, the end justifies the means. Uh, whatever can be used to upset the existing social order whatever can be used to undermine the assumptions of the past, all that's useful. Revolution is a word that appears over and over again in the literature. Reconciliation, though, never appears. See, the idea of revolution is preferred to the pursuit of the common good. The thought is that the common good is going to keep the status quo in place. So if you talk about the common good, you really talk, in their minds, you're talking about preserving the status quo. 
you need, quote, revolution to upset everything. And then they hope they will have the means of control and definition and power. Mark Lilla, or just in a new book, The Once and Future Liberal After Identity Politics, put it like this. These groups offer no fresh vision of our country's shared destiny. Rather, they've thrown themselves into a movement of identity politics, losing a sense of what we share as citizens and what binds us together as a nation. They practice a pseudo-politics of self-regard and an increasingly narrow and exclusionary self-definition. So uh, pro-life women are rejected. Catholic and evangelical Protestant women are rejected. Uh, uh, Orthodox women are rejected. Women of business Women of the arts and sciences are also rejected. I mean, just look over the identity of the speakers. And what you'll see there, again, are largely lawyers, activists, political agents, community organizers. And to seek reconciliation, in, in the minds of these organizers, to seek reconciliation with pro life women, for instance, would be a betrayal of their revolutionary mission. Ironically, some of the greatest voices of our time would be excluded from a convention like this. Fannie Lou Hamer, the heroic Mississippi civil rights pioneer who stormed the uh, 1968 Democratic Convention. She was a born-again Christian. She'd be eliminated. Mary Wollstonecraft, one of the earliest and most intellectually formative uh, feminists, would be excluded because she was anti-abortion. So was Elizabeth Cady Stanton. So was Susan B. Anthony. They were the godmothers of first-wave feminism. They were anti-abortion. The Roe of Roe v. Wade and the Doe of Doe v. Bolton wouldn't be welcomed because both of them renounced their support for abortion and became followers of Jesus Christ. So they're not welcome. Dorothy Day, who believed that uh, our salvation depends upon serving the poor, she's the foundress of the Catholic Workers' Movement, she'd be excluded, even though she w pursued an illegal abortion, uh, but she'd be uh, excluded because she repented of it. See, these women's voices are excluded because the Women's Convention doesn't believe in authentic diversity. They think to be a real woman means to agree with them. They are very uniform, very homogeneous, except when it comes to ethnicity. Um, they tend to treat ethnicity as a political uh, issue. Uh, they want uniformity of opinion on political issues, on moral issues, and they consider support for abortion to be the sine qua non of modern feminism. In other words, if you don't support abortion, there's no way you can be a modern feminist. Gloria Steinem once told me that, face to face. For them, unity is the enemy of diversity. Hey, they don't, they don't believe in e pluribus unum. For them, the pluribus eats up and destroys the unum. For them, that's revolution. Redefining woman in the fragmentary interests of identity politics is their way of defining things. It's their way of controlling the conversation. And that's the reason we're resisting their narrow definition of womanhood. We'll be doing interviews throughout this week on this topic. Uh, the power to define is the power to control. And so we can't allow them to control without a fight. In their America, there's no place for women who want to defend the unborn. Christian women, women of business, women contributors in the arts and sciences, libertarian women, Republican women, are all excluded from this group. The vast majority of these speakers, and we've analyzed them all, the vast majority of these speakers, in fact, I almost say all of them, but there's one or two exceptions, uh, are community organizers, activists, political agents, lawyers, uh, there are some activists, many of them were activists in support of Bernie Sanders. That's their political flavor. I suppose there's some Hillary Clinton supporters, but Sanders was once scheduled, by the way, to give the keynote opening speech. And then they said, he's a man. Somebody said, you can't have a man doing the keynote at this. So Bernie fled. He went to Puerto Rico so he wouldn't have to be involved in the controversy. My point is, in no way... Uh, is this women's convention representative of American women? There are no workshops on building family, no build workshop, workshops on building family culture or neonatal care or surviving difficult marriages or even is sharing uh, financial equity in the workplace. 
This is about identity politics. This is about the grievances of women of color. One workshop, for instance, is Confronting White Womanhood, which portrays white women as principally violent supremacists whose networks need to be disrupted. I'm telling you, this is an ideologically narrow group, unrepresentative of American women. So that's why we speak. They don't deserve to claim, right? They don't deserve to claim to speak on behalf of American women. And we can't, another thing that happens here in the whole public debate, their definition of womanhood is based on a social construction. When the Catholic Church talks about womanhood, it's talking about the nature of woman. It's not a social or political construction. Women are something. They aren't um, elastic to be twisted in any way you want. There is an essence to being a woman. And so we don't reduce women to her political or social influences or her political or social con convictions. Woman is essential to the story of humanity, not because she's constructed by society, because, but because she's a creative social agent as mother, as wife, and of course in all areas of life. But to reduce her to her political affiliation or her class affiliation or her racial affiliation is to misunderstand the nature of woman. Um, again, the organizers define womanhood in terms of politics and power. Catholics define womanhood in terms of human flourishing and fruitfulness. In Catholic thought, even the virgin is a fertile and fruitful woman. In modern American culture, though, the most liberated woman chooses to be sterile. And so that's why we need to confront this belittling of womanhood and the depriving of American women to hear the Catholic understanding. You know, Catholics don't measure women or men by what they tear down or destroy. We measure them by what they create and build up. And this upcoming Women's Convention in Detroit isn't about building up. It's about tearing down. I'm Al Cresta.